This is Debbie Dashinger inviting you to join me and some amazing presenters aboard the Galactic Origin Celebrity Cruise to the Yucatan in December. Go to D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash cruise. That's Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi, this is Debbie, and on today's show, I'm going to be speaking with Deanna Ma'ara divine who is a soul guide and galactic shaman talking about how to become a master quantum creator dare to dream won three talk radio positive change awards the cov award for best radio and podcast show Welp magazine named dare to dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year and it is high ranking on apple podcasts this show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. You can become a facilitator or take one of their classes. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com. If you'd like to know what your galactic ancestry is and understand more your cosmic potential, what your lineage is from planet to planet, being to being, get your free gift from me, a starseed video and report exploring all sorts of different star seeds. It's really a chance to connect with your star lineage. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash starseed. That's D-E-B-B-I. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash starseed. Got a few events coming up. I'm excited to tell you about. Uh, first, I will mention that mm, I think there's only a few cabins left. So if you would like to go on the cruise to the Yucatan with myself and 20 other phenomenal transformational speakers, seven days at sea, I could go on and on, uh, but it's going to be the best of the best. And I know only a few cabins are left. It is December 14th through the 21st, 2024, and you can grab your cabin. You're going to go to debbie-shinger.com slash cruise, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash C-R-U-I-S-E. And I know once you go to that page, I believe you have to make a call at this late time to book your cabin for yourself, yourself and your loved one. And um, you're in. Just use my name to sign up and register. And next after that is going to be the first week of January, the largest channel panel in Sedona. You can experience a weekend of transformative workshops and keynotes from renowned channelers like Daryl Anka, Wendy Kennedy, Rob Gauthier, Jamie Price, Lisa Royal Holt, and I will also be doing a workshop on Saturday. This is going to be at the Sedona Performing Arts Center, and this is an amazing opportunity for you to connect with like-minded individuals and gain profound insights. What a way to start the new year. So secure your spot now for the Sedona Channel Panel at debbie-inger.com slash Sedona. I make it very easy for you guys. Everything's under debbie-inger.com slash the event. So in this case, it's slash Sedona. And finally, just after that, ready for even MOA transformation, the 2025 Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo. This is your chance to experience life-changing talks, exclusive workshops, a vibrant community. Join us February 7 to 10, 2025 for speakers like Daryl Anka, Elizabeth April, I am doing a workshop. I'm moderating panels. I mean, the best of the best of the best are there. So grab your tickets. Go to debbie-inger.com slash C-L-E for Conscious Life Expo. debbie-inger.com slash C-L-E. And I will see you there. So many people come up to me and say, oh, I listened to your show and that's how I found out about this, whatever the event is. I love meeting you guys in person. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to share this and start to become community. So I've got the beautiful Deanna here today to talk to us. She's a soul guide. She's passionate about helping others 
unlock their multidimensional potential. As a metaphysical activator and quantum educator, she uses a blend of quantum, shamanic, and psychological tools to create personalized paths for transformation. Deanna founded the Source Language Institute, which aims to teach pure communication through source codes, also known as light language. She offers a self-paced source code mastery course for those interested in exploring light language. Mm. In her one-on-one -on -one sessions, Deanna provides quantum healing hypnosis, quantum attunement, and crystalline soul healing. She also leads soul and sound healing and Phoenix Rising Kundalini activation workshops, both online and in the New Jersey, New York area. Deanna's podcast, Soul Communication, is available on all major platforms. You can learn more about her at her website. And please note, we say Deanna, but it's spelled D-I-A-N-A divine dot com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Deanna to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Debbie. I'm really yeah, honored. Very cool. The work you do out in the world. I want to start with the um, quantum creatorship, if you can, because you talk about us becoming quantum creators. I want you to explain first, what is a quantum creator? What does that mean? And then how does connecting to our multidimensional potential change the way that we live and interact in the world? That's a great question to start with, Abby. I think quantum is one of those words that some people just don't understand. And it's also a bit of misused words. So we often know about quantum as in the concept of quantum physics. And I think quantum physics plays a big part. But for me, quantum is this field of infinite information and invisible force. Mm -hmm. So we are quantum. We are light beings. We have connection to the source. We have galactic connections. We have all kinds of connections. So to be a quantum creator is one who understands the nature of reality, knows how to manipulate energy, and uh, one that kind of co-creates together with this quantum field. So that kind of goes into the area of manifestation, into holding your vibration in a certain way. And creating from that place so we're not restricted by what we know and what we can see which is we often refer to as 3d reality but really stepping into what is unknown on the other side and from that place which is more of a void space um it's infinite potential we can really manifest and create anything that we want and that's how it usually happens in other dimensional realities it's just here we have been conditioned in a certain way and i think just now we as we awaken and re-remembering who we are we finally understand and, wow there's so much more to what i can see and touch right and and how do i create a reality that fits best to my soul calling to my potential yes it is really important. Can you give us an example when you say that of yourself or a client being on one side of things, really desiring something, using mm -hmm. the quantum in order to manifest something that does really fit and align with your soul's purpose? Yeah, so the steps are pretty simple, actually. I like to give the metaphor of the goddess Diana, since it goes with my name. So uh, the goddess Diana from kind of Greek mythology is the one who goes and hunts in the forest. Mm -hmm. So she's really Bow good. And the, bow and arrow, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, and so think of bow and arrow as your most important tools, really, in, in creation. So... It really starts with the fact that energy is your concentrated intention, right? So if you can put all that energy into the arrow, into the tip of it and concentrate it, so we can want many things, but sometimes it's like paragraphs, but that's not how the field understands what we want to create. So if you concentrate it even to one word or a couple of words and you put it on the tip, and you shoot, you know, that arrow into the quantum field of potentiality into the universe with very specific intention. For instance, uh, let's say I want to go on a galactic cruise, which is exactly what happened to me. 
<laughs> and I remember Debbie who like, yes, just say yes to it. So here I am, I have the intention, I don't have everything lined up for it, whether it's finances or whatever needs to happen, but I have a very strong desire to be there with my soul family to have this experience. So, and I put it on my arrow and I shoot it out, but also it's really important to know what state we want to be when we do that. So we want to be in very neutral state, but yet have excitement about it. So there has to be some sort of energy to the momentum of what we want to create. It can actually also be anger. So the emotional stacking, what type of emotional state we have doesn't matter. But if we operate in from low vibrational state and we're like, oh yeah, I want this, but I, I'm not sure, right? So then you put in doubts into the field, that's not really going to manifest. And so we shoot, so I'm shooting this arrow into the universe and I'm saying, I want to be on this galactic cruise. I see myself on this ship with all these people and we have an amazing time going on with all these excursions. So I'm already visualizing what I want as though it's happening in this moment. And I saw so I'm shooting this arrow into the universe and then I detach from the outcome. So the action matters. Like, yes, you know, it doesn't happen on its own. I have to line up certain things for it to happen, right? So I start moving some things, some, you know, some arrangements, some finances. So I'm taking the action and I'm having full faith and trust that this is already occurring. Like there's no other way, but for me to be on this cruise, <laughs> like I'm not taking no for an answer, right? And I'm just allowing the field to interact. So if you put it into a field, it does not exist. It just doesn't understand it because it's like, it does not exist. But in the infinite field of potentiality, everything exists. The past, the present, the future, it's multidimensional. All we're doing is lining up to it with our intention, with our energy and focus concentration. And we're fueling it with our attention, right? So I wake up every morning and I say, oh, I'm going to wake up in my cabin and I'm going to go in this, you know, workshop or I'm going to help Tony with his awesome whatever table. And so I'm already interacting with the field as though this experience is happening real time. So I'm pulling the future into the now because in quantum physics, there's a concept of retrocausality. So retro causality and quantum entanglement, from quantum entanglement perspective, that means we have two particles in a space and a distance, but really there's no such thing as space and distance. We think there is. And when one particle acts a certain way, the other particle starts acting exactly the same way. So we kind of like, that's how we do healing in the distance. We really coexist in the same space because everything is holographic in nature. The retro causality means that an event that's happening in the future is actually um, can happen already now. We kind of pull in the future into the now and we're already feeling it. So all the excitement and feeling, I'm pulling the future into this moment. So, and then you just trust and surrender. You trust and surrender. So you don't try, if you're trying to control the outcome of it, it's not going to happen. You're not allowing the field to do what it needs to do. You really have to step back you're like, okay, I've done my work. I, I put these steps in, 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 in motion. I set my intention. Um, and now universe, please deliver this to me, make it happen. And, uh, and if it has to be in alignment though, if it's out of alignment, out of your integrity, and you're trying to push to create something that is not in your frequency bandwidth, it's just not going to occur. But if you fuel in it and it is in alignment, it will happen. In my case, I am going to the Galactic Cruise. <laughs> Yay! Because <laughs> I'm meant to be there with you, Debbie, right? And we're yes. To have fun. <laughs> yes, a thousand trillion percent. I'm so glad you're going. I'm so glad you manifested this. It is an amazing example. And I, I want to riff on this for a minute. Because, Deanna, I see so much about people in the way they go about things, exactly how you're describing. Here's us, here's whatever our desire is. And all that stuff that takes place between is incredibly telling about people. So for instance, I watch somebody throw up more obstacles than you can imagine. Now, you know, the cruise is sold out. So it's not like they need her to come right? But I knew she really wanted to come. And I knew she was like, oh, and but how can I financially? But how can I've got a family? But and every step, when she was trying to do proactive things, shoot this arrow, as you say, she was also throwing in obstacles. Oh, 
you know what? My passport is expired. I can't go. I'm like, yes, of course you can go. You just go pay a little bit of extra money. You expedite. I mean, you can have it tomorrow. And who the heck doesn't want a passport that is viable right now? Like, I have to have that because <laughs> you never know where I'm going to go in the world. And if you want to manifest big, have That is your passport to do big things in the world. Like don't have obstacles, but that's little. These are little things you can get through. So each time she would contact me and I'd be like, hey, come on, you could X, Y, Z. Hey, come on. But I was really watching this and I thought, how fascinating to be so in your own way to create. You know, I don't like big crowds. I don't like this. I'm like, so This is your vacation, like design it. No one's saying you have to be in every workshop and every land excursion, like make it what fills you. I'm just saying what you're talking about, like you were clean and pure. You knew you wanted to be there. You felt the excitement. You felt the joy of being with like-minded people and being with everybody, establishing new friendships, deepening some of them, all of the yummy stuff. And I feel that too with you. And then there's other people. And I'm saying probably how you do that is how you do many things because this stuff is absolutely attainable, like a hundred percent. And you don't even know if financially you put something out, what connection you may make that could create money for you or opportunities, or you could learn something such as what you just taught. So life-changing that you can bring back to your world and everything's different. I could go on and on with the possibilities, but I think this is a very important example that you share. Yeah. And I think the other piece is like really about the fact that many don't even trust that they can do this. So if you, and I mentioned about trust, like if you, if you don't have the faith and full conviction that you pull in that reality towards yourself, then you and you put in doubts, like you said, and resistances into the field, then the field is started becoming wobbly too. Because there's another um, really nice quantum physics terminology, um, and I like to use it, it's called superposition. So superposition is, uh, and, and I have metaphors for these <laughs> analogies because I created them for myself to understand, you know, because quantum physics can be overwhelming for some of us. We're like, we're not quantum physicists, but it's applicable to our reality. So superposition essentially means, let's say we are going to watch, um, well, back to maybe the galactic cruise. So, you know, there is potentialities in a field. It might happen, it might not. So it's almost like going and watching a ballet and there's, at least six ballerinas dancing and spinning around. And so the crowd is really liking this one ballerina. And the more they pay attention to just that one ballerina, so she's actually gaining momentum versus the other ones. And she is the one ultimately that's going to win and do the best. And the other ones are going to basically, what they call in quantum physics, the, it's going to collapse. It's a wave, literally like an energetic frequency wave. So the standing wave gets bigger and bigger, and that's the potentiality that ultimately manifests. And the other ones just fall away. So for that to happen, that's why I was talking about the fueling that intention, fueling that affirmation that even though I put the intention out there, I shot my arrow, I have to continue giving fuel to that ballerina, to that potentiality for me to go to the cruise. And I feeling into it. I wake up in the morning, like I'm already on the ship, like I'm making it happen so that the field also is kind of co-creating with me for that to occur. So superposition is an important thing because if we understand how it works, we have to understand there's always potentialities, at least six, if not more, but those are kind of the main ones. And in just in general, as we are going through this transformational time on earth right now, the more of us wake up right now and the more of us give the same intention and attention to the same cause, whether it's love and light or peace on earth, then that wave starts growing and growing and that is starting to occur. And I think we started to feel that, especially this week, I feel um, after the elections, like there's this momentum is growing. Everyone's getting really excited about what's coming 2025 in the next five years, disclosure, hearing that just happened. Like I feel... And a lot of us who are on 
you know, on the precipice of a lot of this transformational change, we're feeling it in our body and we give it a constant intention and attention. Your podcast, that's what you're doing constantly. You bring in all these people in to build that wave. And, and the higher the wave is, the more it, it will occur. That new earth reality we all talk about is happening. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. This stuff is so cool and important. And, you know, I learned, I learned a huge lesson when I wanted to go to shamanic uh, school and become certified, you know, they laid it out really clear and they said, it's going to be six months and we're going to, you know, here's the truth. You're going to add 10 to 30 hours to your week, every single week over six months. Now, if you knew what my life looked like before sham shaman school, I was like, that's, it, it is impossible. It is literally human being, unless I clone myself, impossible. And they said, and to boot, you'll have to do trades. So you learn all these healing practices and you'll have to submit for every module, if you will, you have to submit all these case studies. So then you have to work with people on the outside, outside even of school so that they start experiencing you start honing your craft and then it um was also very expensive and there were so many reasons i could have looked at any of them independently and certainly collectively it felt like a tsunami of no's how could i how will i how is that possible but the only thing i had to go on and i don't know what quantum would call this i i get a feeling and I have in my human design discernment, like knowing, and I just got this feeling like, I know I want to do this. And I had to take all those hows and all those obstacles and just literally put them aside with faith. Like you're going to be worked out in real time. I don't know how, but I know I will. Of course. And I did, right? It's several years ago now. I completed it. I did everything. I never fell behind. And God knows a lot of people did and couldn't complete. But I did everything. And then when it was over in six months, I thought, oh, God, I need a break. I was a little bit exhausted. So what did I do? I signed up for another month-long course. <laughs> More <laughs> of the same, right? To become a Moon Aiki rights practitioner. But that still that... Um, my passion was carrying me through. And on another note, hearkening back to this galactic cruise, you know, so here I am going on a galactic cruise and then the event producer for Sedona invites me. Now, again, logically, I'm thinking, well, I get home on December 23rd. That means I'll be home for eight days. And then I turn around and I fly to Sedona and I do something else. Then after Sedona, those five, six days, I come back and then Gaia TV is flying me to Boulder, Colorado for a second interview on George Norrie's show. And then I come back and then, like when you start doing this, which may sound logical to many people, what it's saying is no to a very limited reality. And I have to go back to the feeling is Sedona exciting? I'm like, oh God, hell yes. I want to do this so much to be in that room with some of these people I've come to know through my show and love. This sounds like the most beautiful way energetically to start a year. So I say, I know I'm a yes. I don't have to figure anything out. I'm just going to book the flight, the hotel. I'm there. They set me up for the workshop. One piece at a time, a day at a time. It literally, it just works. So this whole beautiful arrow thing you talk about, you know, I think maybe how I operate in that realm, as opposed to thoughts about it, because I love everything you described. It's just for me, like, if I'm excited, I'm just a yes. I just know I'm going to do it. And I'm and very I, excited, right? And I think you're doing this. You've been in the flow. And I mm -hmm. think that's what you're describing is like when you're on, on your soul calling, your soul mission, and it feels so in alignment and authentic to everything you do and it just in the flow you get an invitation everything just feels right and you're just flowing with what is available i'm also a yes girl in the way that like if it feels right right if it feels like this is exactly where i'm meant to be this is what what i'm meant to do and my heart like we listen to the heart like my heart says yes my um it's not so much quantum terminology but it's like 
overall omniscience, like we are quantum beings. So we know, I think there is a concept of destiny. Some people ask that, like, is there such a thing as destiny? Yes, there's destiny. So it's, it's almost like the musical notes are given to you, but how are you going to play them, right, is up to you. So that's the free will. Some people will say no. They were going to get that same invitation of the Galactic Cruise to go to Sedona. And they're going to be like, oh, man, this is too much. This is holiday time. I'm not doing that. But <laughs> Debbie's going to say yes. So this is where the free will it, you know, happens. And that's the beauty, I think, of our experience here in, in this 3D reality. And why we are here is to have this experience of yes and no. Ultimately, the destination is more or less the same. But I think the soul gets to engage and play with it. And that's the creatorship part of it. It's like, who do we engage with? How we co-create? Um, what type of beautiful tapestry are we creating mm -hmm. and drawing? But the canvas, maybe some of the parameters of the canvas already established for us. But each one will add its beautiful flavor and flowers and, you know, sparkles and, <laughs> and whatever else. And and I And that's... I think what's so special about especially living in these times because we get to really enjoy the playfulness of it. And I think we often forget it's so heavy with everything happening. The world is chaotic and so many changes are happening and transformations. But if we go back to that innocence and the joy of creation, and if you remember like as kids, we were just we were just playing. We were just doing things without thinking why. It just brought us joy to just be. And so that brings us back to like, it's not so much about doing, it's about being. Mm -hmm. How can we embody the beingness of the now? Because in the quantum field, there's no time. So the past, the present, the future, they're all happening in the present moment, in the now. And uh, I like to think of it as like slices of a cake. So if you slice the cake, everything stacked upon each other. So at any moment we can open and look at time, whether it's in the past or present, and that's how quantum healing hypnosis work. We go into the past lives, sometimes into the future lives, and they're happening as though a person has experienced them in the real moment, because everything is really in the now. But how do we learn how to be in the now? Because often we even, we often not in the now, we either in the future, or and that's anxiety, or we're depressed because we're in the past and trying to relive the past. So learning how to just be in the now is key also to quantum creatorship. How do you see science and spirituality coming together in your work, especially in terms of understanding our quantum nature? Are there um, breakthroughs or concepts in science that resonate most with your teachings? Well, I would say quantum technology, we've been building, my husband and I, a lot of quantum technology. So that's been kind of our way of trying to bridge it. And um, we've created different tools. So we, for instance, like I have these quantum rods, which is something that is a mix of ancient tools from Egypt to running through quantum particles. So taking particles 5D matter from the quantum field and putting them on objects and I can feel it, it activates my field, other people feel it. And now the, I would say issue or challenge is to bridge the, the, the scientific method and actually show measurable results. Like how do you measure quantum? <laughs> and so there are actually tools that are coming out. Joe Dispenser has been doing incredible uh, work, but there's like known tools like BioWave machine where you can see before like how my field is um, and after I use the specific object or specific lights that create the quantum field and how you know my field gets activated, my mitochondria gets activated. It's a healing. The quantum field is our divine nature is a kind of going back home into alignment so if the person let's say was you know all over the place the energy was chaotic the chakras were not aligned machines like biowave can actually show you after like 10 minutes in very nice coherent quantum environment chakras get aligned you know the 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 mitochondria starts working like things that you can show is like just measuring some anomalies in the field but i think it's still a challenge because that there's not a lot of yet scientific method or devices to measure quantum i think we just get in there 
But I'm excited because it's a very pioneering field and I do see quantum technology being the way of the future in terms of healing, in terms of um, everything that we do. Um, it What it does, it really kicks off the parasympathetic field. So like I, I use these slides that we have in my workshops when I do Kundalini activation, people drop in much faster, they relax, they, you know, their mind quiets down, it just supports their them in that moment, in that experience. We can imagine having really beautiful quantum lights in your room that constantly reminding your body, because we are the technology, right? So reminding your body how to be always in the state of coherence and hemostasis. So then we can be the most optimal selves. Mm -hmm. I know you also work with the galactic, we'll call it. Uh, there's different, <laughs> there's a lot of threads to this, but I'm curious about galactic memories. Are there ways that people can access galactic memories? Uh, is there a way that people can unlock them? Mm. Both of us call ourselves galactic shamans. <laughs> Galactics are very much where we had it. And just like you, I started my path as more like traditional shamanism. And there was a moment where actually I was working with the medicine of ayahuasca that she said, you complete with me. You've done everything you possibly do earthly and it's time to go galactic. And I was like, what is galactic? Uh, so that was something that I had to open up to and understand. Um, for me, the experience was actually working with light language. So it was a, an experience where channeling happened and these codes just kind of came through me. I started toning and opening up to it. So anyone can have this experience. Not Sometimes people are like, oh, I have to be born with this connection and, and these channeling abilities. And I want to tell everyone, no, it's our divine right to actually re-remember. And, and some of the ways is, you know, to go into meditation, to um, do hypnosis. So I facilitate quantum healing hypnosis. Specifically, this is Dolores Cannon's modality who has been pioneer in regression work. And some people come to me, they have, you know, past life experiences on earth. Galactic is not always the target, but if the person is ready to receive more galactic memories or go into that specific experience, they do. They they might have a couple of experiences on earth and then the third one would go somewhere galactic and when on some planet having somewhat similar experience, but in different shape or form, because there's always a trend. There's a threat to why they even seeing what they see and the highest self is choosing to show them these experiences that are relevant for them to learn from in current lifetime because they usually come with a question and and so they have to experience death let's say or experience loss or ex uh, sh show different forms of representations of aspects of themselves that are galactic as well because that then widens your perspective of who you are so the memories can be tapped in different ways. Of course, through meditation, I mentioned and uh, the therapy. For me, it just started happening through doing energy work. Um, so, you know, I became Reiki master quite early in my 20s. The more I was working with energy, you know, things just started opening up uh, through dream time, like really paying attention to your dreams. Sometimes, you know, beings show up for people, they, you know, <laughs> they show in physically. Um, for me, it wasn't necessarily that way. It was more through dream time, through these specific experiences with plant medicine, where I really started interacting with some different dimensions and galactic beings. And, and, and then the medicine was like, you don't need me anymore. Like you've tapped into this field. You can go there without the medicine. And I think that's where I'm coming to. I'm when I facilitate these Kundalini awakening experiences and a channel light language People are going into these field, into the fields and these dimensional fields without any type of helpers. I, I would say I would, they like, um, you know, when you ride in a bike in the beginning, you have your training wheels and it helps you to to go there. But then you can take them off and you can because you just re remembering how to to go there and connect. And so. For me, light language, source language, I call it as well, has been the most beautiful way of co connecting to these different galactic frequencies because now I really understand the different flavors of them. 
and I kind of I tuned my radio station to the different frequencies. I started really understanding what they are, their qualities, and obviously someone who's more kind of open to it now I'm seeing them in different forms and having experiences and I'm going on ships so it, you know it's 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 a wide gamut of experiences that I'm having but I feel like if there's intention um everyone can can experience that as well you mentioned before we started that you've been having a lot of experiences lately around the galactic federation um what does that look like I mean do you actually go on a ship do you have a connection there who brings you aboard? I don't know. What is that? I've never experienced so it. Yeah. Great question. So there's, um, so I mentioned meditation. There's different types of meditations. Um, many do Joe Dispenza meditation with a pineal gland and like that. Some people wake up like at 3.30 in the morning. For me, this past year, I've been training myself with a technology called Hemisyncs, actually created by Robert Monroe, part of Monroe Institute, remote viewing. Um, I can remote view and bilocate without it, but I found that to be really nice technology. So the, the way Hemisync works, it synchronizes your left and right brain with the binaural beats. It's a guided meditation. So it drops you into theta pretty deeply. And so tr going through the training that I would say soldiers did back in the seventies when they were remote viewing the the Robert Monroe's work has been incredible and has helped me to, you know, be more comfortable in going into the quantum field quite quickly. So, um, and that's why I've been doing it because I just wanted to be right there. But sometimes, you know, you wake up and your mind is busy with thoughts and you're like, what do I do with all these thoughts? So he has really great techniques of like, you know, you throw your thoughts into what he calls energy conversion box and you convert them and you do some humming and tuning. And there's like certain techniques that he has that help you build that type of focus where you can go into the quantum field. And so, so through that experience, I've been going into the quantum field and specifically lately, I've been connecting to the Andromeda story. Uh, and I know you had Debbie Solaris on talking about where we came from. And so and you and I have been on a Lion conference. So it goes back to that history of the Lion Wars, the Galactic Wars, but actually further where we came from, right? How do we even end it up in the Milky Way? And so for me, um, the Andromeda past um, has been kind of calling back to understand what exactly happened, how we came through from the Galactic Andromeda Galaxy here, how we established ourselves at, as light beings, um, Andromedans in the Lyran system, and created these physical bodies, um, which are kind of hybrid feline, and then, you know, been going through genetic manipulation and evolution to the point where the Lyran War started when you, there was an invasion by the Dracos. But what happened after? So some migrated back to well, not my my great back, but ran away from the Lion system to Pleiades, some to Syrian systems. In my story, I actually ended up going back to Andromeda constellation. Um, in an Andromeda constellation, we kind of re-established this, I would call star nurseries. So we re-established the Lion civilization and a lot of the royal family of the Lion Evian family has specifically gone back to Andromeda for that reason because they felt like they want to be the closest to the Andromeda galaxy and, and, and where we had the ships. So I started reconnecting to the ships and um, in, in these meditations going specifically to the ships where I, where I met my future self. <laughs> She's beautiful, um, like nine foot translucent skin, blue um some people, you know, kind of elongated head has this kind of almost like a device in her third eye um, and really graceful and elegant, um, cosmetic. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Very high dimensionality. So when we think of Acturians, probably the closest, but even higher. So we're talking about, you know, ninth dimensional type of, you know, beings um, and as I started reconnecting to her, I also started visiting these 
what I'm perceiving them as Galactic Federation meetups, um, where they're talking about, and then Dramatic Council mostly, where they gather to talk about the future of the galaxy. Earth is a big part of it. And, and so I've been receiving information about us and what where we're headed and just in general present in, the, in these meetings. So it's been new and interesting. <laughs> and a lot of collaborations so you have to understand, like to go into those spaces, the Hemisync technology have, has helped me a lot because you literally have to retune your whole body and your whole system. So it sometimes looks like jerks, um, like I jerk around, almost like channeling, like to go into that frequency bandwidth to be there. And it took time to even understand why I was um, going back again and again and connecting with her. So um, it, it takes us that retuning, knowing that we're all dimensional beings. So we have all that potential. It's just we have to match that that frequency as well. So when you experience the Andromedans and your future self and going aboard I don't even know. This, these seem such archaic terms because I don't even know if it's really aboard anything. It may be an energetic place where people meet in the ethereal. Um, it may be advanced beings who just don't need to manifest. However it is that they convene and you have been there, is mm -hmm. there anything that they're expressing about Earth, about the changes, about humanity, about the planet, anything that you can share with us? Sure. So the ships themselves, you have to understand, this is not like a plane that we get on that is made of metal. <laughs> We're talking about very plasmatic, organic type of being. <laughs> and the ship is a being too. Um, and it actually has its own intelligence. And uh, the beings that live on the ship, they also tuned to the intelligence of the ship. So it's all kind of one co-creative type of experience. So it is hard for us on the, in the 3D way to understand it, but I'm actually able to perceive the ship and parts of the ship. So it is a real thing. So it's not super ethereal. It's just operates in a different vibrational reality than we have here. Um, and so the, the message, yes, of course. Um, I think the most important message right now is about getting ready for the changes that are coming. Um, so I think one of the key messages is to get, stay very grounded um, and in our emotional field. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the message is about learning to go through chaos in very neutral way in unified way so we tend to get polarized and even with elections like this side that this side that i have to choose and the more we do that we play in the push and pull game which is the old way the old paradigm way the new way and the future way and how galactic uh, federation operates is a unified way so we co-created together this reality from the highest intention from a space of the heart from the alignment within and uh, from neutral place as well um, so we can have preferences and intentions but we also open to other opinions and we kind of it's like a dance we co-creating together so that's one important message um, another message is that we are upon big changes so systems are going to be collapsing you know and we already feeling that um, of course with you know even new presidency, but I feel it's still old system. So mm -hmm. when I'm saying collapsing, like we're going to be really, the Pluto, you know, is coming in, the age of Aquarius. We know it's time of transformation and this like Phoenix energy. So some changes are going to be very quick. The Band-Aid is going to be ripped off and we might be like, like feeling the jottiness and like not knowing what to do. And this is what I'm saying, like building your practices mm -hmm. of, grounding and embodiment of self so important whatever that looks like yeah so because the energy will be chaotic so you can you know start if you don't have a practice start one in the morning how do you start your day when i was talking about this Look up you know, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff in your mind i don't know throw it into energy conversion box. by the way finish that if you don't mind because i was going to circle back so you yeah. said 
uh, Monroe suggests that if you wake up with lots of brrr going on in your head, <laughs> yeah. put it into this thought generator. And can you finish that? Then what happens? Yeah. So imagine a box. It's up to your imagination. And you literally imagine in taking all these thoughts, you know, whatever you have, dump it all in, in into this virtual energetic box and, and just keep on dumping like until you feel you're ready, you know, and uh, and you feel clear. So the idea is to like, you know, not have any thoughts all at all. And then at that moment, you close the box. And as you close the box, you're allowing this energy conversion box to just recompose it, I would say, into energy. Okay. And then after that, he has you do some humming, some other things. And I have to say that energy conversion box um, ex exercise has been tremendous for me because anytime I feel I'm out of alignment or I'm starting to get into anxiety or worry, I'm just throwing it into the box and, and just allowing to convert and, and just feel like much more clear in my mind. And does it convert on its own into another property or are you desiring it for to convert into something purposeful for you? The idea is to just convert it back into energy. Ah. Thoughts are energy. What is thought? Ah. We create reality from mm. the mind. <laughs> mm. And if our mind is busy with thoughts that are not in alignment or lower frequency, usually the worries, right? The little bugs or whatever we want to call them. And, um, and, and we just don't have control over them, right? Or... You know, we watch the news or, you know, we got some piece of information, something is happening. We, we starting to build up this, like, again, resistance field. The mind gets busy with all kinds of creation that is not really serving us. Mm. So how do we get back into that alignment, into that clarity? We have to recompose it. And so that's one of the techniques that I found super useful in, in, in this experience. And as we go in, into the future, the Andromeda and Consul is saying, stay in alignment, stay in neutrality, be grounded, like it's message number one, and but also continue building. So I think some of us who are the ground crew right now, we are building. And so they, they're telling us not to worry about what's going to happen, how this transformation is going to happen. Know that you're going to be safe. Know that you're going to be protected. Know you're going to be totally fine. Even if financial system is going to collapse, you're going to be fine somehow. <laughs> So really like letting go of all the worries and anxieties of the change, which is a lot, you know, for the 3D mind that always wants to control things, let go of control and surrender into the unknown. So the big message was this new era of humanity is about into the unknown. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking of Frozen and that song into the unknown. So it's like, you know, having your own song where you, you know, you know how to recalibrate when you know that you are getting pulled into the push and pull polarity game and backed into neutrality and, and just feeling that everything, like you said, everything is going to be having the inner feeling that everything is been, going to be okay. Mm -hmm. and know that you always support it. There's so many beings right now supporting you in this journey and they're all here. So the reason that Andromeda Council and all other councils and Galactic Federation so busy right now, <laughs> because they are busy helping in these other etheric ways and other ways. But remember, there's a law of non-interference. They're not going to just show up right. until we're ready for it. So that's why I'm interested in about disclosure and how that information is coming out, because many, of course, are not yet ready for that. Yeah. Exciting times. It's really mm -hmm. exciting times. And I think it's empowering to remember. I am hearing a lot about the various collapses coming down the pike, almost to the point also that it doesn't matter what happens in this particular country, um, USA, that this possibly could be the last election, almost like whoever was going to be in office. It's the beginning of the end, that this also the paradigm of politics, which hasn't worked for a very long time, um, is on its way out. So hold your anger, people. <laughs> I didn't vote for him either, but here we are. And I will say, you know, I didn't want to feel like I did eight years ago, that's for sure. Um, my mother was heavily involved with politics, heavily. 
new, very smart woman. Um, and she would have been crushed by this and just reflecting on her just going, yeah, she would have suffered. And I really don't choose that. Um, I know there's a greater good. And I think the overarching picture for all of us is we knew this before we came in. We Absolutely. all agreed to this. Right. And they kind of laid it out, too. But it wasn't just like, oh, it's going to be a shit storm, right? It was also, this is going to be one of the most historic times on the planets where everything's reborn, born anew, new choices, new creations, new humanity, new earth. Like how beautiful that we all agreed to be here at this time. And it's the Phoenix energy. So in order to create, you have to destroy it. that's the only way it works that's right the fire of the phoenix the phoenix coming out of the ashes of the fire yeah yes and so i really relate to that energy and i work with it a lot and as you know as a shaman so we are constantly transmuting energies and we take in kind of the all we transmute into the light so same is happening here we transmute in into this new highest timeline that is going to serve us the best and so In terms of, you know, the elections, I think there's just much more than we don't understand. So I, I feel we are right now more than ever on the highest timeline. I didn't necessarily vote. I chose a neutral position, but I'm just looking from this moment and from the messages from the consoles and it's like, it's go time. <laughs> so that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope because I know also there's a lot of prophecies that talk about the rise of the divine feminine. That's kind of why I thought Kamala Harris, it was really her time. Woman, woman of color, like, come on. I was so ready for something different. But apparently it's going to come in a different way because that is part also of the breakdown. And I don't ever mean the breakdown of men, but I do mean of toxic masculinity in all of us and that we've all agreed to build our society on, you know, working hours, the corporate, uh, you know, no vacations, <laughs> going in even when you're sick, like busy, busy, active, active, and not taking that time you're talking about because that's the everything. right? The, the free stuff, the going and putting your feet in the grass, the, this box you're talking about, uh, meditating, however it is you design the practice that works for you. That's actually the stuff that is going to create the new you to be in the new world. You're going to have the tools. Yeah. And I think we sometimes confuse thinking it's about the physical body of a woman. We have to remember that we have the fa the feminine and the masculine energies within ourselves. So it really starts with us and the work we do with ourselves. And the other message is really about stepping into self-love. So how do we bring in balance this energy within ourselves and bring it into the heart and accepting the infinite nature, the quantum nature of who we are and love every aspect of ourselves to the fullest. That's really, if if we have more people in self-love, there's not going to be room for this mas masculine toxicity because if you think about narcissism, narcissism is built from, from childhood traumas, from abandonment, from not getting enough love. So we just, if we elevate in all of us to that frequency of love and we're helping others to heal their traumas, to be embraced and love ourselves, first of all, then the planetary consciousness is going to be shifting and the mother earth is going to be shifting too. That's kind of her, her, she's going her through her own evolution process as teenagers asking also question, who am I and who are you and how are we helping each other? So it's, it, we did sign up for this. Absolutely. <laughs> and we signed up for it for many lifetimes. This is, this is you and I were talking about Egypt. This goes back to Atlantean Lemurian timelines uh, and before that. So this experiment we're in, here many of us been doing for many incarnations oh my god girl <laughs> when you and i was that our first i think that was our first time we met was it the so deanna and i both spoke uh did presentations at the lyran the cat the lyran Uh, online conference a couple of months ago. It was really great. I mean, amazing information. I think you can still watch it on YouTube. And during your sector of your presentation, Deanna, you did this activation. And then I was like, oh, 
I think I want her to come on the show. That was really beautiful. Would you gift us with, and I, you know, whatever moves you, because I know you'll choose and do exactly what's perfect, whether it's light language or activation or anything. I think we're here for it. Sure. So for us to maybe step into this new quantum reality that we're co-creating. So let's kind of do that and maybe ground our energies. Um, so I'll kind of just walk us through meditation to ground and then activate the feel, maybe clear a little bit and root. Because we also, as we record in this, and um, we're in the energy of the full moon in Taurus, which is all about abundance. It's also, both, also about materialism and the root chakra. It's like how how we hear manifest and but learning how to be here in the root and i think sometimes we hear in the mind a lot but not in the body let's be in the body <laughs> so so yeah whatever comes through so i'm just going to guide and bring some light language so for those who are not familiar with light language it's a quantum language it's the language of the soul of the heart my higher self is a channel for your higher self so whatever resonates how we feel it you might feel it as tingles in your body, might feel some resonance, might feel not anything. That's fine too. Just be present to what is and just know that it's codes that hit a new blueprint. And then it might take time. Like you might not feel anything right now, but in the next 48 hours, something might shift. So just observe your shifts. Um, and that's the, the magic of, of the language because linear language is like one-to-one. -one versus quantum language, the light language is much more multidimensional. All right, beautiful. So let's, so how, how long do I have? Like five, 10 minutes, right? Not too long. Okay. So I invite everyone. To close their eyes, and take a deep breath into your heart. And when we start, can you just go a little closer to your mic? You got yes. just suddenly there you are. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, I just changed. Um, I hope that is the sound good. Okay, yes. Um, sometimes the sound of light language doesn't translate through, so I have to change the, the settings. Um, the, the high tones don't translate. <laughs> That's the reason. We're catching up the technology and the frequency. So, okay, let's go back and... Just find a comfortable position, either sitting or lying down and closing your eyes, taking a deep breath into your heart space and exhaling out, releasing anything that's not serving you at this time. And another deep breath. And just scanning your system, just seeing if there's any resistance in your field. On the exhale, just releasing it out. And another deep breath. And exhale. And I want you to imagine a radiant orb of light surrounding your entire body, stretching as wide as outstretched arms. And you are positioned perfectly in the center of a circle with equal distance all around you. And just breathe into that space. And now I want you to visualize a portal opening beneath you, extending deep into the earth. And this portal is a vast tunnel of light and it looks like a, a triangle going down, down, down through the soil, through the rock, all the way to the crystal iron core of the mother earth. And in this moment, take the time to connect to this beautiful plasmatic radiant core of the mother. Just breathe deeply into the space, feeling grounded and stabilized. <laughs> Feeling the energy. 
energy of the Mother Earth as you are her child. Feeling your connection and love as you are coming here to nourish and support yourself. Feel that connection with the mother. You can even visualize her as a older woman or younger woman. And see yourself giving her a hug. And feeling this deep love from the mother as she is so thankful for your journey here and for your connection with her. Feeling as the roots are really pulling you down and you're grounded and stabilizing your structure. And I want you to imagine another triangle of light now coming from your heart, extending upward through your crown all the way to the great central sun, to the black hole of our galaxy. And you see yourself now balanced, standing in the middle of this octahedron. And I'm breathing into the space, breathing and activating your field, illuminating, cleansing every cell of your body. Breathing into the field, feeling yourself in full alignment. Breathe into your root chakra, Unduatia Wata. What do you want to manifest and create? Umbaitia to what project? Maybe it's a house, maybe it's a specific thing. Just see it happening in this moment right now. Umbaitash tuatia muatia. And we're going to do a quick quantum jump into the reality where this is already happening. So I want you to visualize a quantum gate. And with your field, your energy field, we're going to now step over, walk through the gate. And we walk it through the gate. Untuatia. And we are on the other side. Now seeing this project, this particular thing you wanted to manifest is happening on that other side. In that quantum space of potentiality. Breathing into it. Noticing what it is feeling in your body. As you create more spaces, more structures within yourself to hold more light, more information, more manifestation. Urutumba shtar tia tua tia mushtu kutua tia shumua. Arutushtumba ita sunua na tia tu su kua tia ti. Umbua tia shakatia tumba ti su. Ambua, ambua, ambua ik a tu shimania. Untu kia tia sita tia 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 tushtumba isa. Umbu shia tia kumba sana 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 sana. And to complete this process, we integrate in, visualizing the roots again, anchoring, 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 anchoring into here now and so it is and so it is and so it is muatiaka shimati umbu faretashu trust and surrender umbu stambaya ku at iatumba in the present moment tushtumba ki umbu atiatumba shi know that you are loved urunuma umbu ashia Umbu Yashia, Nu Maya, Ishai.
ima eta tushtumbaya. And taking a deep breath back into your body. Integrating these codes. That was beautiful. Wow. Doesn't take much, does it? And it's like, oof, so powerful to completely transmute your energy. Yeah, I think the the geometry really helps. Um, I've really been working a lot with the octahedron. Octahedron is also a heart. So anytime you feel you wobbling in your field and you're not stabilized, and I think we talked about the energy conversion box, and this is another energy conversion box for your field, you really want to be grounded and rooted all the way to the core of the Mother Earth. Some people just, you know, in the meditation, have you like create just, you know, roots of a tree but i found that you really have to go deep in like a triangle and another triangle so kind of building this 12 dimensional octahedron and then you in the middle some people talk about merkaba merkaba usually spins so it's not the most stable geometry but octahedron i find is the geometry we want to be in right now more than ever as we're going through transitional time so any time you are in chaos you're not feeling grounded Imagine yourself in this octahedron, but the octahedron that roots you all the way from the t from below and above. Lovely. And I didn't know that about the Merkaba, so that's pretty huge information too. Merkaba is a is a travel vehicle. It's mm -hmm. it's wonderful because it spins, so it takes you to places when it actually it activates. But it's it's usually it's two triangles, but it's like fire triangles. They, they're really good in, for movement, but not for stabilization. Mm -hmm. I found octahedron to be the, the most stable, and it helps you to be in the heart as well. So as long as we're in the heart, and that's our stable other portal in, in this physical body, in this vessel, and stable in our dimensionality, then, um, then this, the field already knows what to do. Your body knows what to do. It just feels like I'm sure you feel a little more coherent and aligned, uh, just maybe from like a few seconds ago so i i would use that any day <laughs> for for your meditation practices or just visualize that just step into it step out of it play with it mm. and do you have a thing a, a way to change your sound back to the louder version uh, so we can hear you it's it's really low um oh you couldn't hear me it was yeah it's quite low but now you're whatever okay. Whatever you're work doing as well. Oh, okay, maybe I should have turned it off. All right. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but a lot also, of it is just feeling and not even hearing. Energy. So energy, yes. So hopefully Absolutely. that translates. I received it. I really did receive it. That was actually much needed right now. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think also a beautiful way coming off of that conversation because that can kick up a lot of stuff inside of people, even the knowingness. Wow, there's a lot of change coming. Every time I think this is it, right? And there's a lot more coming. It uh, can be very centering and uh, very reconnecting with all that's wonderful, including ourselves. And so, Deanna, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, that's a great question. I think my dreams are big. <laughs> I see myself like, facilitating big workshops uh, with a lot of people and just, you know, but also being in community of like-minded people where we're all like building these future schools. That's what I'm really dreaming about. Um, my 11-year-old son, like he goes to regular school and I can see how hard it is for him as someone who is you know, first time on earth, how hard it is for him to be in these particular you know school systems they just don't support these type of beings so for me i'm dreaming about schools i'm dreaming about this new paradigm where we all supporting each other we live in these communal environments we co-creating together but also our children feel like they belong and um, that's really where my dream goes and people can find you at I'm going to say it like dianadivine.com, okay. although we call it Diana, but mm -hmm. dianadivine.com. Any other place they can find you or anything else they should know about what you offer? Yeah, so uh, 
Diana Divine, Diana Divine.com. Um, you can go to also sourcelanguage.org for light language activation course that you can take on your own. So all the information for Source Language Institute is there. You can find me on Instagram as Diana M. Divine and all the other platforms. Um, I also have some products. Um, they you can find them kind of through my website, um, the rods that I've mentioned, some sprays, the, all of these quantum tools that help you to calibrate and stay aligned and really powerful tools that came through a lot of downloads and me re -memories from Egyptian times, how we use the tools to help us to calibrate our system and, and we remember who we truly are. Mm. Thank you for coming on the show today. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's such a pleasure. And I end today's show with this quote from Native Red Cloud. Let the fire within shine brighter than the darkness around. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Please leave a comment and share. It gets this in front of people who really need to hear these things right now. Next week's on the show, I'll be featuring Suzanne Giesman, and all these people are yet more reasons to subscribe because you don't want to miss these conversations. Suzanne Giesman, Teal Swan, Daryl Anka, Rebecca Dawson, Thomas Winterton, Marie Diamond, Paul Hynek, and Barbara Lamb, and so much more. It is the who's who of the times we're in, and they're here to guide us and help us. And that's really what this is about. I support you through these times. This is my mission to be here doing this. So help me in my mission, help me get this out. And again, subscribe, like, comment. I do read what you write. And I just heard from somebody the other day who said, I have been sending one of your shows. I did a three hour show with a channel all about the election and the changes. She said, I've been, she's a uh, therapist. She's been sending it to all her clients having a hard time and like, exactly, that's what to do. But please, with reciprocity, do like, share, comment, and subscribe. It means the world. Thanks for joining us today.